Hello, everyone. There's Dr. George Gonzalez, and this is the Hologram Podcast. And I am so excited today uh, to be featuring one of my very close friends, uh, Dr. David Vlasic. He is a chiropractor. He's been practicing for 48 years in chiropractic. Uh, he has a, a very interesting past. He is a dive master. He's also been a pilot, and he's uh, just an all-around amazing person with uh, amazing stories. And we wanted to share uh, some of his himself with with you all today so that you can learn more about him and about quantum neurology and how uh, they both go together. So Dr. Vlasic, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, you're welcome, George. Glad to be here for you. Excellent. You know, we wanted to uh, talk to you and, and let people know about you and, and the wonderful things that you've been doing. You've been working in chiropractic for uh, 48 years. God bless you for for doing that and being uh, you know, in chiropractic so long and helping so many people. And you've studied with some of the great masters in, in our profession, uh, Dr. George Goodhart, uh, Dijarnet, and others. You know, would you mind talking about, um, you know, I kind of uh, started all over the place, but you've been in the industry a long time and you've seen a lot happen over the years and you've studied with these great, great people. Uh, where, where do you, how do you uh, feel about all that? You know, it's a fantastic uh, field to be in to see all of the changes that have happened over uh, these years in practice. Uh, when I first was introduced to the whole concept of chiropractic, it was because I was having uh, uh, incredible back pain. It all just happened one morning, or I, it came upon me one morning. And neighbors said, you got to go see my chiropractor. And I said, you're who? Because I'd never heard the word. I had no idea what that was about. And uh, he said, well, it's a doctor who specializes in back pain. So I went. Uh, and Dr. Richard Navratil did a full examination, ear analysis, et cetera. And I might mention that uh, chiropractors had to do that themselves when I uh, was starting them because labs wouldn't take any chiropractic lab work because if the MDs found out about it, uh, they boycott the lab. So chiropractors had to do their own lab work. So Dr. Navratil did the lab work and he came back. He said, well, you got a kidney infection. Here, lie down on the table. So he gave me a treatment. Uh, I was in real severe pain and I felt better. He said, I'm going to have to see you daily. And I said, okay. And so I went there every day at the end of the week. Uh, I was fine, able to be back at work. It was during the summer, so I was working summers, uh, making uh, school money. And uh, I said, now, what about this kidney infection? Now, who, who should I see for that? And he said, oh, well, you don't have that anymore. And I was a well-bred American kid, man. I knew you had to have medicine for an infection. And uh, he said, well, no, we're the kind of doctor who treats things like that without medicine. Well, I was incredibly intrigued and uh, didn't know what to make of that. So back at the University of Washington that fall, anyone who had anything, I'd call him up and say, can you treat this? Can you treat that? And if he said yes, I'd send him to him. And he kept doing what he said he could do. So one day, you know, he suggested that I get all the prerequisites from different colleges, chiropractic colleges, and I did. Changed from pre-law into pre-med, got that out of the way, and off to chiropractic school I went. So that was my beginning in chiropractic. Um, finished up chiropractic school and came back into practice with Dr. Navratil and his wife, who was also a chiropractor. And uh, he came in just spitting mad one day because the MDs that he'd played golf with for quite a number of years explained to him that they had to quit playing golf because um, someone at the hospital here found out that they were playing golf with a quack and they were going to cut their hospital privileges if they didn't stop playing golf with him. So that was, uh, that was the era that I started in chiropractic. Uh, wow. Yeah. So it's, it's so come a long way. It has come a long way since then uh, from having to do all of our own lab work to now being able to use labs quite freely. Um, some of the doctors that I sat in seminars with uh, a few years after that, were doctors who had spent quite a bit of time in jail for practicing medicine without a license, meaning they were practicing chiropractic. So I've seen a lot of change since the time I started. 
uh, shortly after I got into practice is when I started uh, studying under Dr. George Goodhart and uh, had the opportunity of spending a week with him in his office, following him around. And that was an eye opener to see what he was doing and how he was recording everything he did and coming to the conclusions that he was teaching in the seminar. So that was, that was awesome. And I found out that he was uh, sent on this whole trail of muscle testing by Dr. Dijernet. And uh, so after studying with Dr. Goodhart and uh, learning much of his protocol, I then started uh, studying under D Dr. Dijernet and eventually began teaching for him in his classes and his seminars. Did that for 22 years. Uh, and during that time, uh, a student by the name of Dr. Bob Walker started in SOT. Dr. Dijonet saw him, recognized his brilliance, and said, all right, just like Dr. Goodhart was sent on the mission to develop this whole muscle testing business, I want, he was saying to Dr. Walker, I want you to take this whole bite dental thing and develop it. And so those were big mentors for me. Um, and that, that was my beginning and my progression through chiropractic until I came across, oh, there was this guy by the name of George Goodhart, or George Gonzalez, that was the result of Dr. Goodhart onto Dr. Dijonet, Dr. Walker, and then you, George. So that's been my progression so far through, through the profession. Well, we've been so blessed to have you with us, and, and you've been with us since near the beginning. You know, I think you started with us uh, within months after I started uh, teaching quantum neurology. And uh, do you remember uh, how long or when, when that was? You know, I uh, meant to... It was early on. It was early on. It was about your third seminar, I think I found out later on. It was in, in Colorado. In okay. Colorado. Yeah, definitely that first year I started teaching. Yeah. And you had a funny story about when we first met. You know, when you first came to the seminar, um, I, I forgot the story. Why don't you tell it? Well, you know, the whole, my whole interest in quantum neurology was, quote, an accident, unquote. Now, I don't believe in accidents. Uh, I understand in hindsight how my life was very much directed, but I was teaching at uh, an SOT seminar, and one of the vendors there had uh, something sitting kind of on the back shelf, and I asked him what it was, and I said, oh, this is a laser. And I said, you know, that is something I've been meaning to study and learn about, because I'm hearing about lasers. I really don't know anything about laser. And uh, they said, well, if you want to understand about lasers and learn about lasers, you got to take, um, you know, George Gonzalez's seminars. So that was good enough for me. So I found out about this seminar that was being held in Colorado. And I showed up and um, walked down the hallway, found a room. There were a couple gals out in front of the doorway at a table handing out, you know, books and registration, doing that sort of thing. Went inside, seminar started, and uh, you started by telling the history of quantum neurology, how it got started. Your wife had been uh, partially paralyzed, and um, you know, that was how you, you went through the story of how you were seeking care from a lot of different doctors, and then um, gradually you were given, and you kind of gestured from head down, you know, I was given this information and uh, he said that was, you said that was the beginning of quantum neurology. And then you started lecturing and you kind of left your wife dangling there paralyzed in my mind. You know, I knew nothing about any of your background. So I didn't mind interrupting you. I raised my hand and I said, well, before you go on, you know, what's, how's your wife doing? You know, how's she? And you looked at me with this, you dummy kind of look and said, well, what do you think? And I was dumbfounded. I mean, what did I think? How am I supposed to know? I just walked in here. <laughs> I, I didn't say it out loud, but I, in my head was, 
well, I called you some names. Let's just put it that way. And they weren't. I'm sure they, were, they came from a place of love. Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so I said, well, how am I supposed to know? And you looked at me and said, well, you met her. You saw her out in the hallway when you registered. Like I was supposed to know which one of those women was your wife or that you even had your wife there. And uh, I do recall, I did recall at that instant that, yeah, both the women out there were moving very freely and bending down, getting things out from under the desk. So, all right, if one of them was your wife, then I guess she's doing well. <laughs> and uh, with that, you then proceeded to not say anything about why I came to the seminar. I wanted to learn about laser. You know, what is a laser? I knew nothing about coherent and incoherent photons and all that at the time. And you started having someone up and you did some muscle testing, which I was very familiar with. And then you, you know, took out a light and was shining on them and were kind of waiting for me to me and the rest of us to be impressed. And this went on for a while and I realized I was not going to get what I came for. But this was interesting, so I stuck around. <laughs> and I realized that I was in for a neurological seminar. And yeah. that was my beginning with you, George. Yeah. It was fascinating by what I saw. And, and, and almost 20 years later, I guess you weren't saying too bad of things in your head. Uh, no, I quickly forgot about that. <laughs> got interested in what you were doing and was pretty amazed. And well, actually, at first, I wasn't amazed. At first, my first knee-jerk reaction was, well, this is really phony. This, this can't be. Really? I, yeah, no, I was... You haven't told me that totally, part. It was totally unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, and I knew how muscle testing could be misused, and you could make anything look like anything, and it was pretty clear to me that that was probably what was going on. But as time went on, I, I realized, no, there, was, there seemed to be something to this. And here I am today, still studying with you. <laughs> and 20 years later, we're still together and very good friends. And, and very good friends. A blessing to have you in my life. Thank you. Well, you believe, got to believe I so dearly appreciate you and your perseverance and sticking with guys like me uh, <laughs> who were such skeptics and, uh, you know, questioned everything you were doing. So I really appreciate you, George, and how you really continue to push forward and move forward and develop uh, all that we now have to work with. Well, thank you so much. And there, there is that level of healthy skepticism, you know, it's like, um, yeah, I, I can believe that you're telling me something, but uh, show me how to do it, you know, show me, show me that it's duplicable. And I, I think that's where people, when they're willing to look at quantum neurology and actually physically do it, and feel it, that's when it changes for them because it's like, um, you know, all of a sudden they could do something that they didn't understand can be done. And so, you know, you're so experienced. You had experience with Dr. Goodhart and with DJ Arnett and, and with Bob Walker and, and uh, many other people as well. And there's something that you have the ability, you have the discernment to recognize something valuable in healing. You saw it in Goodhart, you saw it in DJ Arnett. What did you see in quantum neurology that, that made you go, this, this is something that's, that's worth putting you know, 20, 20 years plus into, uh, like you have? Well, there's a number of things about quantum neurology that uh, captured my attention. One, uh, I saw the potential for it to be able to be used in conjunction with basically all that I had learned previously. So it's not like I had to discard anything that I had previously learned or used and found very effective. Uh, I was able to integrate it with what I already knew. And what kept me particularly interested was, was that a lot of the things that I had previously used and done, I could still do, but much more quickly, much more efficiently or effectively than what I had done before. Things that would take me quite a number of maybe treatments to accomplish, I could accomplish in just a few treatments or a lot fewer treatments at least. And so 
all of those kinds of experiences with quantum neurology uh, just kept me wanting to know more and how could I apply it in yet different ways and how, what, was the, what were the limitations of quantum neurology, which I've not yet discovered. And so that's, that's a big driving force for me and has been and I think always will be a, a driving force for me. I, I love it. Thank you so much. And uh, one of the things, you're, you're an, an amazing practitioner. And, you know, your results uh, follow what I'm saying. And, and you have a lot of things that you do very, very well. And one of them is muscle testing. And you are one of the most uh, efficient muscle testers I've ever met. Could you talk about uh, the muscle testing? And you, ha you have a philosophy of, you know, it's, it's you're testing it versus the patient or, or you phrase it a certain way. Would you mind talking about that? Not sure I remember exactly what you're referring to. I think when a patient, uh, you know, may challenge you on, on the muscle testing, you're like, well, I'm testing for myself. You're testing against your, your action versus okay. how they're responding. Or I, I forgot how you phrase it. When patients are questioning the validity of, of the whole muscle testing process, uh, I basically am reminding them that I, I think many of them are of the belief system that I'm testing them to impress them or I'm testing them to um, prove something to them. And so I make it very clear to them right up front that they don't even have to pay attention other than to do what I tell them to do because the, I am not doing this for them. I'm doing it for me. I need to find out how I feel their body reacting to different things that I'm doing. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's, it's about me, not them. And they kind of are surprised to hear me say it quite that way. <laughs> saying it that way because it sets the, the stage very, very clear that it is about me and what I find out. Uh, they've come to me for help. I'm the one that has to know the information and the muscles tell me things that I can't find out other ways. Absolutely. I, I was having this discussion on, on a, one of our community boards talking about, you know, when we teach this work, we have to have a guideline of, of hey, somebody's getting better. You should uh, give a basic idea of two visits per neurological weakness. But there, that's just a guideline, right? There's something beyond that you know, bringing somebody to neutral where all their mitomes are strong and cranial nerves are strong. We have to take them further than that. And I think you, you're so good at preparing a patient into care so that there's a bigger vision than uh, I just want to get out of pain or, um, you know, get me out of here as quickly as possible. And you create lifelong patients. Would you mind talking about that a little bit? When I start with a patient, um, I, may, I tell them right offhand that I'm going to be doing a very thorough exam. Uh, I want to go, I use the expression to them, I want to go through you with a fine tooth comb and learn everything I can about you um, before I try to start fixing you. I've got to find out what is going on. Um, start off with a very thorough history because oftentimes patients in their giving me their history that they don't think is important, starts giving me clues where I, later on down the road, I'm gonna be sure to uh, look at and look at very carefully. Um, when we get through with the history, I go through uh, a prolonged uh, physical exam, usually including x-rays. Um, and after the exam, which by the way is uh, about a four hour process spread, uh, spread out over about two days. Um, and at the end of that, sit down with them on the third day and go through a very detailed explanation of what I'm finding. Yes, they all come in with whatever their complaint is, um, usually pain related, although in a lot of patients now, it's no longer about pain. They'll come in because they're having digestive problems. They're coming in because they um, are tired all the time. 
Well, why would they come to a chiropractor for that? Well, because whoever they got referred in by has already prepared them to know that it's not just about pain. And uh, so I am getting that a much broader kind of patient base uh, in recent years. But the ones who come in for pain, um, it's easy to say to them, yes, getting rid of the pain is, is really nice and great. And yes, of course we want to do that, but I'm far more interested in finding out why in the world you have that pain in the first place. And they'll say, oh, well, I think it's because I, I slipped on the ice or I, you know, I lifted this or I did that. And I basically am ready to come right back at them and say, okay, but there are hundreds, probably thousands of people who slip on ice and who lift things like that and they don't have pain. And you've probably lifted things like that and you've had other slips and you'd end up with this pain. Why this time? What happened? before you even knew something was wrong that made you susceptible to having this kind of pain reaction. And of course, a lot of the patients that have come to me have already seen two, three, four other doctors. And so what's behind it? So the, the, to get back to the question you asked me, by, by the time I get done uh, talking about all the different things i found and how they relate to whole body health, they start getting a pretty good understanding that the pain they had when they lifted something might very well have been from the sugar that they're eating or that the pain that they're experiencing, you know, the headaches that they have might very well be because of the dental work that they told me about that they had three years ago. And ever since then, they've been starting to have trouble or it might be any number of things. So when we get done with that, they have a very good picture, at least as good of a picture as I know how to give them, of all of the different factors that we're going to need to either address or make sure they get addressed by someone before we can expect to have a nice solid uh, rehabilitation process going on. I also remind them that everyone who is that has really good high level function in their body feels good. But not everyone who feels good has really high function. So when we get them to the point where they're feeling good, that's wonderful. That's one of our goals. But that by no means is an indicator that they therefore have really good function biochemically, that they have a real good function musculoskeletally. They have a real good function uh, gate wise that they have a really good function on and on and on. So uh, they get the picture early on that when they're feeling good, that is not diagnostic. What's diagnostic is getting back in on a periodic basis, going through a little miniature exam before every treatment to find out is the, you know, myotome system working up to speed. Is the visceral system working up to speed? Are the cranial nerves working up to speed? Is the sensory system working up to speed, et cetera? And so they're no longer coming in anticipating that I'm necessarily going to do anything similar, this treatment that I've done the last number of treatments. It depends on what's going on with their body. How can I best access their nerve system and get that brain body reconnected? Absolutely. Absolutely love it. And I, I personally have been your patient and I, I have, a, you know, great respect for what you do because you help bring me out of, se of severe pain uh, from a broken tailbone that, that I had suffered uh, several years ago. And all the doctors that helped me were able to help me, but I just wasn't able to get to the other side of healing where I was able to get well. And it wasn't until you and I started working together and you layered in a few things. And one of the things you introduced to our community is using, um, I, don't, I don't know if you describe it, high frequency vibration, the vibration plate you use. Yes. Uh, but using that technology really leveled up um, what I felt as, as my healing uh, come into play. Would you mind talking about that and uh, how that levels up for people? I think we've all experienced having a patient on a table and doing our testing procedures and then doing our treatment procedures, going back and retesting and those things that were not uh, testing well, uh, suddenly look very 
uh, nice and strong. And then we know that if we get them up off the table and have them stand and get them into a weight bearing situation where they're having to deal with gravity, some of those things that tested really well, either that we've just got done treating or things that were never weak in the first place or showed any problem in the first place now show up. And we can test up to that and treat up to that level of, of effectiveness. So then when I take them to the power plate, which is a brand name of the um, piece of equipment that I use, and the claim to fame on that is that we have both uh, front to back, side to side, and up and down movement. So basically a pitch roll and yaw uh, movement. And when they stand on that, their nervous system has to go into a much, much higher level of function in order to keep everything in the body working at a nice high functional level. And oftentimes I will find things at that level that I completely miss in a gravitational and or recumbent um, position. And so that really opens up a whole new pathway of and level of uh, rehabilitation, nerve rehabilitation, muscle function. It, it was tremendous. It was exponential. It was a surprise. And it's one of those things that, you know, it, it's something that First, I feel people need to learn quantum neurology, and then they add the layers such as the power plate technology or, or other uh, brand names that may serve uh, similarly. Uh, and it's really powerful, and it truly, truly helped me get well, well enough to now that I'm traveling across the country and I'm starting to uh, lecture around the country, and that's thanks to Dr. David Vlasic and the other wonderful quantum neurology practitioners. Now, in the interest of time, we have to uh, uh, bring this to an end. Uh, I, I really... I want to thank you, Dr. Vlasic. Thank you so much. I, it's a high recommend if you're a patient or a doctor that needs care. Please go see Dr. Vlasic. He's an amazing practitioner. And Dr. Vlasic, how would people get a hold of you or, or get in on your waiting list? Because I know you have a waiting list. Yeah, I have a bit of a waiting list. Uh, you know, calling our office is probably the very best way. Uh, 425-455-9580. And, uh, the front desk will make every accommodation to, to start that process going. Um, I realize that uh, since I started practice, there's something called the internet and there's something <laughs> called uh, having the internet presence. I do not have that yet. So uh, having some new doctors are going to be joining me soon and I know that I'm going to be integrating that into the office protocol, but right now we're really old fashioned, so you still have to use the telephone. Yeah, well, when, when you have a waiting list practice, that's, uh, you don't need to run to the internet. <laughs> so you're doing great. No worries there. But Dr. Vlasic, thank you so much. It's so wonderful to have you and uh, sh in sharing your knowledge with everybody. I really appreciate it. Uh, love to the family, Dottie and, and the children, and, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Glad to be here. Good talking to you, George. Okay. Hang tight one sec.